Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be going through the second of the Academy missions for the Apollo in re-entry. So uh, this is going to be the fun one, uh, where we're actually going to be able to take this spacecraft up into space. Uh, the interesting thing of course is uh, since we're one of the Apollo missions, uh, we are a lot of rocket that we're trying to get airborne here, or spaceborne I should say. So it's going to be interesting but kind of slow experience. All right, let's see here. Uh, lesson one, again, there's many systems. We're very big. Uh, the S1C is our first, the S2, the S4B is the upper one. I don't know what happened to the S3D. Uh, dust communications, how do we know? The upper part has an instrumentation unit. Mm -hmm. uh, it controls the rocket unless you do something stupid. And we are good to go, all right. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Again, remember in this particular spacecraft, we are a nice crew of three. Basically, I've got the duty of handling kind of stuff like this. I've also got my controls for translation, kind of doing a lot of the flying, although the folk over on the right side has also got that. I've actually got this really, really neat window up here that you can't see anything, because of course you have this little tiny launch escape tower sitting on the top right now. Okay. All right, lunar module, that's something that's directly behind us. I'm not going to worry about that too much. The service module, of course, is the top part. Uh, dive into the boost preparation, the mission pad, and I will get to you. All right, let's get boost preparations ready. Checklist. Boop, boop, boop. Let's do it. Run. All right, first things first, we're going to get our Apollo computer ready to go. Verb simply says this is the action. We're going to type in action 37, enter. And we're going to say 0, 1, being a go ahead and execute program 1, enter. When you do this, of course, you're going to watch your IMU start to freak out on you as they start to synchronize and get all ready to go. While this is going on, we're going to take a look at our electrical systems here. I'm going to go ahead and fire this up real quick. And we have plenty of battery. Proceed. We'll set this to position three. Looks pretty good to me. Good. We're going to go over to our ATT rate. We're going to flip this one on. We're going to go over to our transfer control. We're going to put that one on. We're going to go set all these up, make sure it's set correctly. Looks good. Again, most of this is going to be for the controls of your gimbals for your really, 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 really large engines here. But it's also going to be for your attitude control. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and set up some of our radios. We're going to put this in the middle position. We'll pop this one over here to the middle position as well. And we're going to do ourselves a radio check. Go ahead and call them up. They should call us back and say everything's fine. Looks good to me. We're going to go set and check our other radio systems as well while we're at it. Pop that one back up. Pop that one back up. And we're going to go do another radio check, just using a different wavelength here. Everything looks good to me. All right, that sounds fine. We're going to go ahead and check to make sure the command is down. Again, we don't need this right now. TCS, television camera system. Go ahead and turn that up. We're going to turn this one down. We're going to uh, thrust control system. I'm sorry, I got that confused with the one in the F-14. We're going to shut our reaction valves off. We're going to prepare for emergency doing this by hand. Don't push this button. All right, going to come down to our tape. We're going to go ahead that to the forward. We're going to open up our radiators to start cooling us off a little bit. All right, we're going to bus tie, which is actually kind of interesting. This is a pretty complicated spacecraft to be doing a bus tie like this, but eh, okay, we're going to do it anyway. Set those both on, which makes them nice and linked. We're going to do our last couple pieces with the radio, set it to the middle position. Again, normally you have more than one person to do all this. And then we're going to line our GDC. Remember, this is kind of our primary display for attitude. This one is our backup. So by pressing this button, it's going to snap the backup into the same position as the primary. And that's it. This spacecraft is now ready to rock. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up time here. And we're getting some warning lights at four minutes to go. Again, this is just letting us know that everything is uh, warmed up and ready to go. This computer is going to do all the hard work for us today, so we don't have to worry about it too, too much. Again, what an upgrade this particular computer is compared to what we had over in Gemini. Of course, in Mercury, you didn't even have a computer, but again, you can imagine just how challenging that is. All right, speed up time a little bit. Everything's warmed up. Wow, we can breathe fine. The battery systems are looking fine. All right, two minutes to launch. So we're waiting for the disconnect. Once the countdown at minus nine, it's going to start shaking a lot. Uh, ignition commands, it'll go on, ignition is extinguished, engine to normally, inboard engine will shut itself off because obviously um, the thrust gets a little extreme at that point. And then once stuff happens, it's going to do automatically. You don't even have to push the button yourself like you do on Gemini, which is awesome. Awesome. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a look. Everything is looking pretty good. we got two minutes to go. Basically, you're waiting for these little panels to kind of knock themselves out of the way. One minute to launch. Okay, three things. Five engine lights are extinguished. Let's confirm that. Correct. Uh, mission elapsed is going to be good. Looks good. And that's all there is to it, really. 33 seconds, and uh, we get to go airborne, or I should say spaceborne. Well, it's air to space, but that's all right. 
Now, the interesting thing is, like I was saying before, is this does not have the thrust to weight ratio as the earlier missions did. So as a result, uh, you just don't quite get up into space nearly as quickly, which is a shame. But again, knowing how big this thing is, it's just amazing that it even existed to begin with. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine power. All right, we are on our way. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, you can just imagine just getting leveled by this thing when this thing accelerates. We're only pushing about two and a quarter Gs right now, which isn't bad. Now remember, our lower stage is basically kerosene, so it's basically going to be our kind of our high thrust, but not great gas mileage, comma, you know, not necessarily that. But because it is kerosene, which is super duper dense, we don't need a gigantic stage like we do if it was a hydrogen oxygen stage. All right, we got our things. We're gonna set this just in case something terrible happens. Uh, monitor mission time frequently, a uh, QA. We'll go poke over here real quick. And then we have all of our different pressure systems here. Good. Cabin looks good. Uh, QA looks good. All right, computer's displaying some data. This is interesting to see, actually, in case you're curious. This is our inertial velocity. This is basically our velocity. Remember, we started at zero inertial velocity. This is in feet per second, by the way, which is kind of a funky unit, even for somebody who comes from the United States. R2 is H dot. This is how high up we are. And the one near, down here at the bottom, this is basically altitude above pad radius. This is a little bit of a cal complicated calculation, to say the least. All right, uh, max Q, uh, we just hit the part of the atmosphere where we produce the most amount of drag. Uh, in the real world, of course, uh, for those of you who've seen that movie, this is the part where the entire top part of the rocket basically becomes one giant thing of white. It's actually pretty exciting. Ah, we can't do external. Oh, there is the external view. Yeah, normally you have this huge little kind of cloud coming off the side of it. All right, everything's taking us up pretty nicely here. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mark, mode one, Charlie. All right, mode one, Charlie. If we have to abort in a hurry, we got our button. EDS is going to be flipped to the off button, although I don't know how to do it. Engine two off. LV rates off. And we are basically good to go for the rest of the climb here. You can see we're pushing four Gs now, <laughs> which is, that, that that's a little bit of pressure to say the least here. But we're about to uh, run out in just a moment. Yep, our inborn engine just cut off and our acceleration comes down a little bit, saves us basically a G, which is a little bit more comfortable. Obviously, if we ignored this and just kept the thing at full thrust the entire climb, yeah, we get up there a little bit sooner, but be a little less comfortable. Common problem on the space shuttle as well. It's always fun when you jump to the outside view and it's nice and quiet. Making an awful lot of a fire behind us here. Gunk. Oh, I love this. I'm sure you've all seen that little video right there. Because I love how the second stage here breaks off. Yeah, there it goes. Bye-bye. And here comes our next stage. This stage is so cute compared to the one that it just dumped off. So in a few moments, we're going to get a jettison of the little tower up on the tippy top. This is the easiest mission we've done so far. We're just sort of in it for the ride, so to speak. Let's see here. Looks good. Looks good. I'm going to go take a uh, look at all our instruments real fast there. All of our RCS is 90. Oop. Tower is jettisoned. Oop. Did it get away? There it goes. Bye-bye. Hey, apparently it's kind of get to the moon before us. Right, I'm going to flip this to the down position. Come on up here. I'm amazed how much stuff you have to set on this one while you are in flight or during this acceleration. I just feel like a lot of that could have been automated, but there's probably some logical reason why they chose not to do it that way. See here, we picked up about 860 feet, 8,691 feet per second, which is quite a bit. You're gonna have to divide by three there if you're looking for meters a second-ish. Look here, looks pretty good. All right, let's go take a look at my instruments while everything's kind of bouncing us around here. This stage is hydrogen and oxygen, if I recall, so it's going to take a little bit longer to burn out. Again, we're using all fuel cells on here, but we have some pretty nice batteries. Hey, hey, I think we all know what this gauge is about. Again, you're Apollo 11 fans, or Apollo 13 fans, rather. Cabin pressure looks good. I'm gonna go take a look up here. We haven't even touched this stuff. Uh, we'll need this quite a bit when we start doing work with like a rendezvous with the moon and all that. 
it's pretty good and yeah, batteries and all that stuff is fine we're at like 21 amps which is plenty i'd have to start shutting lights off if i want to take the edge off of that coming down here we're not interested in this just yet yeah it's starting to come up a little bit looks good Coming up to our acceleration. Notice our acceleration of this stage is garbage compared to the one that just got us up here. But keep in mind, that was a really high, high, high mass ratio stage. It didn't surprise me just how fast we got this thing going. Yeah, it's too bad you can't do this one in VR yet. I'd love to check this out. The interesting thing is, man, is this thing a little more comfy. Put my head down here, see what we got. Ah, I was wondering where this is. Panel number 100, by the way. Of course, you have the sextant sitting down here, and we have all the stuff that we're going to need to be able to connect our lunar module. There's a little hatch right there. Obviously, I would not recommend opening this hatch at this time because uh, we have kind of a long way to go. One nice thing about floating down here, by the way, is you have all the verbs and all the nouns all ready to go. So that's actually kind of handy. All right, let's go ahead and float myself back up here and put my head out the window, and isn't that a gorgeous sight? You know, the moment you see this and realize just how small the world really is when you're up this far, it's just, ah, that must absolutely melt the brain instantaneously. Obviously, yeah, when we're doing a little bit of the uh, Lunar Lander connection mode, let me stick my head back here. You can actually see the reticle very, very clearly. And this will be, will be lining up to go ahead and stick ourselves into it. But that's like three or four missions from now, so I'm not panicking on that one too much. This is actually a very easy to control spacecraft. I think it's even easier than Gemini, personally. Ooh, back to work. I did. Or don't start when I push you. All right, that's going to go ahead and give us a little bit more control. There's the gimbal. See how the whole thing is going, whoa, and bending around. Now we have a little bit more precision here. Ooh, what does this button does? Boop. <laughs> we'll use the SPS to get us going faster. Yeah, that would not go pretty well for us, I don't think. Let's take a look here. Yep. So this is our S2C. This is uh, our, and then we have our S4B, which you don't realize is just the absurd scale of this particular rocket. You know, if you were a person, you'd be a little bit shorter than this. It's just, it's insane how big this thing is. Like you're looking at it going, oh, it's not that bad. It's like, mm, no, <laughs> you have no idea. How are we doing for mission time here? Seven minutes. Usually uh, we hit the top right when that says 10 minutes-ish. This should be a little concerning. This little yellow pole, is that kind of the oh shoot handle? Take my head straight up, you get a nice view of Earth upside down. You got the much, much easier to open method. Obviously, I'm sure you've heard that story about what happened when they could not get out in a hurry. Got some stuff for FDAI. Now, I like how they move these controls up here versus over here. It's kind of an interesting little twist. Another thing I really like is how, oh, inboard engine cutoff. Another thing I really love is that your rate are now listed like this as opposed to built into the instrument like we saw in Gemini and Mercury. We're up to 17,477 feet per second from total velocity gained here. That computer's just happily chunching away as we're sitting here getting bounced around. All right, 803. RCS looks good. Let me see we can play with this. There's not a lot going on here, so I'm not worried about it. We've got command module, we've got your service module. Plenty of little RCS on here. This thing has a lot more delta V up in this command module than anything we've flown before. Again, because you're going to be able to have to pull out the module, you're going to have to be able to synchronize, you're going to have to be able to orbit. Oh, it's crazy what you need to do with this little teeny tiny rocket that we're sitting on right now. Float down here real quick. Pitch is uh, slightly down, but that's all right. Acceleration is up to 3 Gs again, so we're definitely starting to pick up some speed here. 11, this is Houston. You are go for staging. Over. Stand by for mode 4 capability. Stand by for mode 4 capability. Mark, mark, mode 4 capability. All right, just like our first stage there, we're going to reduce our thrust a little bit. And there goes the staging. It's going to drop off, and we're going to boop and fire up the S4B here. You notice we're going to pitch ourselves up pretty aggressively. The reason we have to do that, of course, is uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have a lot of thrust to weight ratio up here. S4B is kicked in. All right, we are on our way up. 
So this is going to be the last part of our little boost phase here. Like I said, we're going pretty, pretty darn soon. The S4B is uh, used for two purposes. Uh, the initially, it's going to get us into orbit. And second, it's going to be what's going to give us our TLI. That's basically going to be our translunar injection, which is going to get us racing over to the moon uh, relatively efficiently. Uh, one of the killers for that system, though, is that you only get basically a couple ignitions out of it. You can't use it again, like I've done in some other games that involve rockets. <laughs> And we are moving now. This is about 23,000 miles an hour. It's, it, it's fast enough. It's fast enough. And we're starting to pitch back down the other way. Where's my acceleration at at the moment? We look down. Yeah, about 1.5, which is pretty typical. Actually, less than 1.5. We're at like 0.8. So yeah, we're, we don't have that much thrust away anymore. Got the window. I'm going to stick my head out the top real fast. Oh yeah, look at that. I wonder what this is. Hey, it's a UFO. Definitely a UFO. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. And, and uh, of course, if I stuck my head out here right now, this has got no atmosphere to block it. Out my eyes. Hopefully I got a little visor on this thing, which I do. Clink, and we're safe again. All right, starting to do this little twisty twist towards the end here. Picking up a lot of speed here. I can feel the acceleration coming up even though I can't see it. Yeah, we're still hovering right around 1G. It's a good time, too, to check to make sure these two IMUs are agreeing with each other, which uh, they are, which is awesome. One less problem. We'll take a look at how everything on this side of things is going. Interesting. Interesting. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Uh, suit temperature pressure is good. Cabin pressure should agree with suit pressure. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. We don't have a CO2 problem, like yes. Cryogenic tanks. Looks like we have plenty on board. Looks like we're at 100% on the way across. We won't have 100% when we get back from the moon, obviously. Let's see here. Propellant tank. Uh, it's, it's pretty darn cold, but this is times 10, by the way. I always appreciated that. Let's see here. Pressure looks good. Pressure's good. We're using just a little bit out of the fuel cells at the moment. You know, we're not exactly draining these things. But obviously, we wouldn't want to be using too, too much here. Temperature is not warm at all but again that's your fuel cell so you don't have to worry about that much so when we do get into space finally we're going to, have to warm these things back up because again if that stuff freezes up you can't pump something that's frozen easily <laughs> the sps i love that whoop all right everybody get out your notebooks notice how it doesn't let us do anything until we go ahead and complete the stage get out our notes look right here Got it. Key flash, so we're gonna press key release. Got it. Thirty seven E. Okay. I'm gonna press verb. 37, enter, whoop, verb, 30, whoop, that's not a verb, <laughs> I'm going to get it, verb, 37, enter, and we're going to do 0, 0, enter, whoop, I'm dying a little here, 37, enter, 0, 0, enter, there it goes, I knew I'd get it, key release, okay, we did it. All right, safe orbit, F1, mission pad, select mission for insertion. Okay, let's go ahead and bang this one out, and we should be good to go. All right, I'll go bang this one out real fast, and then we'll call it a day. Ready, go! Down, 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 down. Off. Down, on. Now, notice we're disabling our bus tie here. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and disable all of our explosives, which is a shame. Everybody loves explosives. Alrighty, I'm going to flip over to here, shut that to the off position. Set this to the other bus. Flip this one on. 
RCS logic. We're going to set this down. Gonna, ah, now we're going to turn on the RCS heaters. I was wondering when we we're going to do that. Kind of, kind of need that. CMO. We're going to put this to normal. Again, this is for caution. Uh, reaction valves. We're going to go flick those on. And we're going to go ahead and open up the H2 Purge. And we did it, folks. We managed to get this entire thing way up into space. Everything is looking pretty solid. The spacecraft is doing everything it's supposed to. And uh, thankfully, everything's going to start warming up pretty soon. So we don't have to worry about that. Enjoy.